Get out of here as well. Got the battery in it and the cradle inside there. Took the battery out in the Ford 2600 tractor. Yeah, this battery did sweat a lot. Spit all the sets out the side. I'll have it aside of the tractor. Sits on that. That was all for the vast strategy, so I had to bathe that. That in baking soda. Fill that with some washer powder and baking soda. The battery cradle's in there. I'm going to do some electrolysis treatment to fix it. it needs a battery clamps. Now I'm going to run a lead to my um, anode, I mean, cathode at the bottom there. The battery cradle, that battery made a mess of it. It's just all chewed the bottom of it and rusted it to shit. So I'm going to have to give that a repair with some electrolysis. Got some copper wire. Connect, connect that to me workpiece. I know it's dangling over the top, but just a piece of drum lid, scrap drum lid, rotted to some scrap flat bits of steel. And that surface there spans a whole battery compartment, the seat that the battery sits on. I'm going to use this battery charger I fixed up on 24 volts, 20 amps. So 24 volts at 20 amps, I'll get that thing clean in no time, so it should work great as my power supply. I'm going to wire my um, cathode up and we'll see how we go. Okay, the is all hooked up. I've got the um, battery post terminals on there too. Those clamps need to clean. They've been messed up bad by the um, battery energy, so a good clean. They should come up and work great. Power's off, for what I start with. Everything's fine. I checked for shorts. There's no shorts, so hopefully all is good. I'm only going to clean the cradle top half itself on the battery compartment, not the whole complete assembly so you see when I take it out it had a lot of brown rust left on it the majority of it was bare metal but a lot of it was just bare rust so I'm going to give this a, to clean it then I'll paint it with some good kill rust paint to protect it so hold on 24 let's switch on oh it's put some load look at that I'm putting some load on the battery on the indicator here 12 volts, 24 volts, so it's putting nothing in there. Probably about 6 amps load on that. Something's starting to bubble up there. This is just the water I washed it in. It's got bits of grease and dirt in it, but most of it's a baking soda I washed it with, and I put some washing powder in it to top it up. Yeah, those wires might be hot. They're just holding it up so it's sitting straight. Did that, I don't know, probably an hour or two, we'll see how she turns out. Something's already starting to happen. That's only an inch and a half from the battery compartment, so about that far. So that's sucking up all the crap off it, so I can get it pure, clean that surface as best as I can. Then I'll just, just touch it up with a wire brush if need be. Then paint it with some protective paint, because this battery does take a lot of paint, and it's just eating the battery cradle itself which is eaten completely through in some places so this sort of um, restore it so I can get the best possible metal exposed to paint for that paint to protect it so this sort of do a very good job so I can paint it and it will be like new again it will never rust so this will take back all the damage that battery's done so yeah let's see how it goes in an hour or so so uh, I'll switch this off for a second I'm going to try and get this thingy going. Ant meter so I can see how much current I'm um, current pulling. Dangle it down here, hook that in series, positive end is this end, I go to that. So the needle moves the right way. So, I'll just quickly get this hooked up. Uh, viewers, it should be a good enough connection, a pure copper wire. Off a building cable, I stripped out, and some copper. Good connection there. Negative, so positive goes this way. That needle moves the right way. Negatives on there. Hook it up so I can see it. Let's turn it on. Yeah, that bloody thing there plays up. Oh, there we go. Sticky damn thing, but I'm pulling three amps. Yeah, and that was a little bit sticky for some stupid reason, but. If we don't spark and make the hydrogen and they go bang. That's my current I'm pulling there, so this thing wants to stay still. 
yeah, it's a bit dicky, but she'll work. Gives me a rough idea how much amps I'm pulling. It only goes up to 8 amps max this meter, so about 2.5 amps. Switch to 12 volts. 1 amps. 2.5 amps. Medium setting. Low setting. 2 amps. 2 and a quarter. Max flat out. It's about the same. Engine start. 3 amps. But yeah. Pulling about 3 amps, so. Leave that there, keep me track of how much amps I'm pulling. Yeah, that shouldn't be too bad a connection. Oh, there you go, that's a better connection there. Three and a half amps I got up to there, so. Okay, I'll come back and later on we'll see how, we, how that turns out. But there you go. Pulling three amps. Okay, the also I'll just flick this switch back 12 volt. Back on the 12 volts, let's skip the 4 volts. Flicked it back on 24 volts again, and it's jumped to 7 amps now. Look at that. The needle's fluctuating to show me that there's electrons penetrating. But yeah, I've got a good connection there. 7 amps at 24 volts, that should be done in no time, I reckon. Water's not warm yet, hasn't been in there for that long. But there you go, she's pulling 7 amps, and I've got to 12 volts, 4 amps. 24 volts, a medium setting, low setting. Minim minimum of 6 amps. There you go. Now it's telling me a corner of this battery indicator. The battery is half full. So it's, it's imagining that as a 24 volt battery. But this is pretty damn good. 24 volts, 20 amps RMS. If you've not got one of these types of battery chargers and you don't use a 24 volt setting and you've got a lot of amps to work with for all that chalysis, this thing kicks ass. That's plenty of amps now. 7 amps. That thing only gets up to 8. But there you go. I should have did it before shot of this cradle, but I'll get it when I get it out I'll show you. But before it was pretty bad. It should look heaps better now than what I did what it did before. Well, I might have to repaint the whole complete assembly though. So it won't look original to the tractor, but at least back and paint it won't rust anymore, because I don't know if you can still get those replacements. Um compa uh, battery compartment, so best to save this while it's still young, so to speak. Early diagnosis for that rust is the key, so I'm going to give it a couple of coats when it's finished of that kill rust, um, cold galvanising paint to protect it. Then when we get some paint that matches the colour of the tractor, the blue, that Ford blue type paint for those older tractors, I should be able to um, make it look original again. And then, yeah, should look original. <laughs> yeah, see, there's supposed to be a hose that comes off here, an elbow, hose goes down to the bottom of the tractor, so the, the acid crap comes straight to the ground, but these batteries never came with one when we bought them. So it's here you're supposed to um, you pull the plug out, whichever side the battery faces. It's supposed to be an elbow supplied and a hose supplied with the battery, but we never got it. So as a result, all the um, acid from all the cells transferred over, overflowed, and came out here and filled the battery compartment up and just rusted the crap out of it and had an electrolysis effect from here, tracked down and just wrecked it. So yeah, it just had the opposite effect and rusted the battery cradle instead of tracking and rusting this. So mostly happens if we crank the tractor over so that's putting a lot of amps to it so that's eating the hell out of that battery cradle. So we've been using this to put the battery on but it's protected the battery but it hasn't protected the cradle, see it's all rusted and stuck for this. So yeah, putting the um, battery clamps on there is a good thing too to get them cleaned up. You can see what little bit is on here. It's supposed to be gold but it's rusted. That's the bit that clamps it back, the tractor bonnet, so the bonnet locks onto that, holds the tractor bonnet closed. It's a bit of rust in that bolt hole but there was a hell of a lot in that battery cradle so should be good after this is done. Okay, the old piece of track that it's off. It's a Ford 20, 2600 model. And you can see the battery cradle sits here and it slides out. Then you put the battery on and slides back in and sits on here. Clamp stand, it just sits here on top of the engine. But you can see this white residue, it's just dripped off and wrecked the paint. 
the side of the engine block, the paint's all been wrecked. It's just destroyed the paint. So yeah, you can see bits of it there, it's taking some paint off. I've got to give these cables a good clean and my blowtorch, burn the grease off. Go over them with some sandpaper to purify those connections. And we have the best possible connection. So the track there will crank over really good and the atonator will work really good. Which the atonator might have to be um, replaced eventually if there is playing up again. That's what sits on top of the battery. The chain goes around to clamp the battery down. And you can see that acid just wrecked that bit of rubber, destroyed it. But yeah, it's supposed to paint it the same colour as this, but I haven't got the paint code to match that colour. So it looks original, but anyway. Black will have to do for now. Starter mode has been laid on. Had new brushes put in, new um, armature and gear, because that was all worn and this thing got slow and cracked very, very badly. So. That will have to be the same colour that match the battery cradle, so either way, that'll be fixed. So yeah, get these cleaned in the meantime. Okay, the oils I've been noticing. I just tap this because it's a bit unresponsive, the needle must stick. But I tap it so it refreshes and the needle moves again. That means I get like 8 amps now, so the cleaner that gets, more amps pass through, the higher the amp goes. So I'll probably, get, I'll probably get at least 10 amps out of this damn thing. The needle's gone up a tiny bit too, so... Yeah, it's definitely getting good connection between the anode and cathode, and therefore more rust is coming off, so... More metal is exposed, so... Yeah. Hopefully, with that much current, this thing will be definitely be done in no time, so... Yeah. I'm pretty amazed at that result. 8 amps, plenty for that, so... Yeah. Okay, the oil has been 20 minutes later. That metal fluctuating is a good indicator. There's electrons flowing, so that's good. Yeah, it has dropped down a few amps, by the way. It's not being dicky or anything. It's a bit... yeah. I don't know why the needle sticks. Must be where it pivots. So I have to try and fix that. But yeah, it's got about 3 amps now. Let's switch the voltage down. Then back up. Okay. Yeah, must be a true reading, so the amp has dropped down a bit. Okay, well, I'll play with that connection. It's gone up again. Yeah, this is only just a temporary setup. From what I'm going to do to use this properly, I'm going to get some heavy cables to plug this into. Maybe put it in a box or something. And just use a main cable to go to there, connect to any old bit of wire I use with a good connection. So just like this, because this connection's why I'm not getting a good reading, but there we go. Putting 8 amps again. Oh, a little bit over 8 amps. Better be careful I don't spark that too much. If I set the hydrogen off, it's bubbling up, poof. This will go everywhere. This stuff is pretty messy, so it's putting bits of the paint off, but. I'm better off sacrificing the paint than letting the whole thing rust to death because I don't think they're, they're an easy, um, easy thing to find for these auto tractors. Not even warm. I was expecting this wire to be hot, but it's not even warm yet. I'll let, it, let this go as long as I can, I think. Longer the better. It's just an old. Um, We got these given to us by our local council to chuck plastic bottles and cans in. And the truck comes and picks them up with the rubbish, chucks this, empties it out in the recycling trailer. And yeah, but there's usually holes in the bottom of it, but I've sealed the holes up. There's no one uses these anymore. The council just gave us another wheel bin instead of using these, so I've sealed the holes up with some silicon. I just use it for an electrolysis tank. Heavy duty stuff. Very good quality stuff for this sort of thing. And it's manufactured from recycled plastics by Nilex in Australia, so that's another win win. It's a tiny bit warm, but it's a cold day, and the water to begin with wasn't very um, warm, it was kind of cold, so you can see this effect here. I might just give this thing completely strip it up on the upside and on the other side. It's best um, to do with this, I think. Because, yeah, it's got a fair bit of rust on it. But 
this thing's doing its job. And when I said 20 amps, I should have said 20 amps RMS. So I'm actually putting 20 amps through that. So high on 24 volt or 12 volt, 20 amps RMS is what it's rated. So I've got it on high here on 24 volts so far. And it's telling me it's giving me 10 amps continuous current. Doing that. But it will give me 15 amps RMS. But if I was using 12 volts on the higher setting, I'll get 20 amps on the 12 volts. So on the 24 volts, I'm getting 15 amps RMS, but 10 amps continuous to use it through that. But yeah, if I use 12 volts, as I was saying, it's obviously 12 amps continuous, but a bit, a bit higher voltage, be extra penetration into that rust, get the electrons moving. I mean, 15 amps RMS is still pretty damn good. So, yeah. This thing ought to look pretty nice and neat after that rust is taken off. So now I'm going to design. I've got some old gardening, just little hoses to use in your garden, little tiny pipe. Get some of that, run that from the battery down underneath the tractor. It will hang below the um, engine block so it Whatever comes out of here goes straight on the ground, does not end up heating the tractor. Because this stuff just fills up the cradle, just wrecked everything. So I've got to find something to connect into there where the hose is coming off. And that will divert all the crap that this thing spews out on the ground instead of rolling in the tractor. It's a pretty good battery, 720 cold cranking amps, so the amount of work we do with it and the cranking in, well, it doesn't do much cranking, but it's mostly getting charged, topped up all the time. I was going to spew out crap, so it's best to put the thing on there, get everything straight onto the ground and away from the tractor. So, which is the main thing that wrecks cars, it's just batteries spewing their acid everywhere. But yeah, this sort of fix it good. Okay, the oil's well, it's been a matter of probably about four or five hours now. Let's see, um, yeah, it'd be about nearly five hours, close to. The water's a bit warm here, and we're still pulling 8 amps. Charge is not even warm. Yeah, the gauge is um, moved a bit. It was here, and it's lost power, so it's saying that it's charging now. But yeah, that's good. We've still got 8 amps, we've still got some more fast to pull off. There's a that anode mab cut off with a bit of drum lid. That's mixed with some of the blue paint and it's turned green and along with the rust and dirt and it's made this mucky mess. Well, I might leave this thing for as long as I possibly can, I think. The longer I leave it, the better. Because it still seems to be a lot that can clean off. I've also got the battery on the diesel fader. The out matter is a tiny bit weak on the tractor. I'll fix it up again as I was there. All the cranking we've done, just stopping and starting and stopping and starting and low idling. You have to rev the engine a bit to get those. Um, for some tractors, you have to rev the engine a tiny bit to get the air matter to pick up. Well, we haven't been doing that very much, just occasionally, which does charge the battery, but not like it should. So, I put the battery on a diesel so to top it up. Got the got a hose on the end of it, and it's spitting out a little bit there, which that was over there, so I had to move it. It's coming out of there. So that'd be perfect to stop crap from wrecking the tractor. So it's well, it's already it was a tiny, tiny, tiny bit low, but she's fully charged now after being on there for about two hours. This battery should be cranking like it's just come out of the factory now, so I think she's fixed. Yeah, indicating full charge, which is good. No, not hot. That's good. There's no heat in odd places so it's actually ought to crank like I just came out of the factory it certainly looks like it came out of the factory now after I cleaned it I did top the floors in this up too so put a little bit of um uh, fresh battery floor in there it's all good so now we can um get that cradle fixed maybe another couple of hours at least so we'll check on the cradle if it looks good we'll dry it out Give it a pressure wash which picks up all the um, 
cap off it so I don't have to steer a wall a lot of the time. Then once it dries I'll just paint it with a um, cold galvanising paint. The black, we've got some black cold galvanising paint. I'll spray it with some of that. So it's, um, it's like a lust guard, kill rust type paint. So yeah, they'll match the colour of the battery and the colour of the starter man. So it looks somewhat part of the chapter still. Because the aftermarket starter man, the colours of when you get the parts fixed on all the chapters, I'll often paint them black commonly. So they will somewhat match the chapter still. But yeah, I want to eventually get some paint and repaint the part of it that this sits on the original Ford blue to match the tractor. So it should look mint. But yeah, this is definitely a good idea. Yeah, it should spat a little bit of acid out of there, but it's good to have that. That's what you're supposed to put on when you have, see that just goes down there. It runs down your, where your other electrical wiring can go, like I want with a lube, I'll clamp it along that. So it's all neat. And have it all looking good, and then we'll look, yeah, what a crap will escape out of that. So, yeah. Okay, the wheels, she's off. My work piece is out. There's my anode I used. Didn't do much damage as I thought to it, but yeah, she was getting chewed up. It's just washing powder and a bit of bicarb. Washing powder and a bicarb both meet environment, environment um, standards and phosphorus and EPA standard, so the byproduct is pretty much harmless. I've done this before, I washed it, dumped it in the glass down over there. The weeds died, but the grass recovered pretty well after a couple of weeks, so yeah, that byproduct of the washing pad is obviously environmentally friendly as well. So let's give this a good, I've got the spiral nozzle here, close range, and just blast all the loose stuff off and see how it looks. But yeah. Here it was all perfectly clean metal, but of all the other bits where water sat and battery didn't um, contaminate it enough, it was just rusted. But yeah, you see where it's just chewed through, weakened all that, chewed through there. So I'm going to give it a, as clean as I can get it so I can paint it. Uh, yours is my anode. Just my previous anodes I used, my very, very first attempt at electron uh, electrolysis. Stuck on the ghetto, rotted them to a bit of drum lid. Yeah, it's gonna last long. <laughs> but yeah, that paint's a pain in the arse, see? So most of it came, some of it came off. Screwed that bung up really good. Those threads are gone. Okay, if yours is a battery cradle, most of this stuff here will just wire brush off, but looks better than that. This front here I'll just brush off with a wire brush. There was a lot of that all around this area. A hell of a lot. Saves a lot of back breaking work, hand brushing, wire brushing, and grinding and that with a wire brush, but that would come off by hand, or hand wire brush, that would come off. Brush of that measured you off, but as you can see, that mess the battery's made here. It's just eating it through in some places. I'm just going to give this a good, um, yeah, wire brushing. Then just dry it up. And give it a couple of coats of that rust protective paint. So yeah, thanks for watching.